Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In the previous video on malaria, we discussed about the disease severity in India, the pathogen that causes it, vectors which spread it, and the life cycle of plasmodium parasite. Continuing with our discussion on malaria, in this video, let's look at the clinical symptoms, the possible complications, the diagnosis, and treatment of malaria. As we discussed in the previous video, among the five species of Plasmodium, Plasmodium vivax and Plasmodium falciparum are the most common species which cause malaria in India. Now both these that is vivax as well as falciparum take 48 hours for their erythrocytic cycle as discussed previously. So as a result patients tend to get symptoms on alternate days that is every 48 hours. The symptoms include obviously fever, chills, vomiting, headache and other flu-like symptoms. Now during the erythrocytic phase as a lot of RBCs get destroyed, the resultant anemia leads to a lot of tiredness. Now this tiredness is classical of malaria and can persist for many days even after the patient is cured of malaria. If proper diagnosis is not done and the treatment is not given on time, it can persist, progress and may even cause a lot of complications. Now, various complications are believed to be more common with falciparum infection than with vivax infection. In low transmission areas or in areas where malaria is not so common, adults are more likely to develop complications of malaria. And in high transmission areas or in other words malaria endemic areas, adults are usually immune to malaria and it is the children, the visitors, migrant laborers are the ones who are prone to get complications. While the pregnant ladies, they find it difficult to cope up with severe malaria infection and it can also adversely affect the health of unborn fetus. In 2019, WHO reported about 229 million malaria cases worldwide with about 4,9,000 deaths due to malaria. Plasmodium falciparum contributed to the majority of deaths related to malaria. Plasmodium falciparum is associated with a lot of complications including severe jaundice, severe anemia, thrombocytopenia that is marked decrease in the platelet count in the blood which in turn can lead to a lot of bleeding complications. Pancytopenia, ARDS or acute respiratory distress syndrome, renal failure, hepatitis, shock called as algid malaria or cerebral malaria. These complications collectively contribute to the mortality associated with falciparum infection. On the other hand, Plasmodium vivax is generally considered as a benign parasite in spite of its large geographical distribution. But of late, there are multiple reports from different countries including India of severe Plasmodium vivax infection including complications like severe jaundice, thrombocytopenia or even multi-organ dysfunction. You can see in this table which is taken from one of the study conducted in India about the complications with different species of plasmodium that percentage of patients developing complications is not too different for falciparum and vivax malaria. In other words, plasmodium vivax 2 can cause significant complications in a given patient. While cerebral malaria is in itself a vast topic and let's make a separate video dedicated to cerebral malaria and will not discuss too much about it in this video. When a patient is suspected to have malaria, the doctor advises for a few sets of investigations. A few to diagnose malaria and few others like complete hemogram, LFT, RFT to find out the baseline functioning of different body organs and also to detect any early stages of complications. Malaria specific test which is almost always done is blood microscopy. Two types of smears, thin and thick smears are done. One to screen and the other one to look closely. The advantages of microscopy are that it is quite sensitive it is possible to detect different species of uh, plasmodium 
and also to some extent quantify the pathogen load in the blood. The other diagnostic test that may be ordered is RDT or rapid detection test. This detects the circulating antigen of the parasite in the blood. This test is even more sensitive than blood microscopy and can obviously detect even lower levels of parasites in the blood. But the problem with this test is this cannot be used for the prognosis. That is, once the patient is given proper treatment, this test cannot be used to assess the response to treatment. That is, even if the patient is cured of malaria, the test remains to be positive for up to three weeks. Plasmodium vivax is treated with a combination of chloroquine and primaquine and the dosage is as shown in this table. But in other words, in simple words, for an adult, 600 mg of chloroquine on day 1, 600 mg of chloroquine on day 2 and 300 mg of chloroquine on day 3 is given. Along with this, as Plasmodium vivax can sometimes remain as hypnozoids and can cause future recurrences as discussed in our previous video, they should also be given 15 mg of primaquine every day for 14 days. This primaquine is contraindicated in pregnant women, infants and patients who are known to have G6PD deficiency. If a patient develops any of these symptoms on starting primaquine, it should be stopped immediately and he or she should be brought to the doctor immediately. Plasmodium falciparum, on the other hand, is resistant to chloroquine and should be treated with artesunate combination therapy or ACT along with 45 mg of primaquine on day 2. In ACT or artesunate combination therapy, artesunate is combined with any of these, while this being used most commonly and also in national program on malaria, except in northeastern states where the prevalence of resistance to this is quite high. When malaria treatment is started, these general measures should be taken care. Malaria treatment or the medications should not be given on empty stomach. And the first dose is preferably given under observation as some patients can develop complications. In malaria, patients may have vomiting. So if the patient vomits within half an hour of taking malaria medication, the dose should be repeated. Once the treatment is started, usually the symptoms resolve within 48 hours. And if the symptoms do not resolve or if there is progression, then the patient definitely needs to consult the treating doctor. The patient also needs to be examined and evaluated for any other concomitant illness. Well, there are a few issues like what to do in case of treatment failure, either because of drug resistance or because of non-compliance by the patient or how to treat severe complicated malaria. I'm not discussing about these things here because they need strict observation and monitoring in the hospital. However, for those who may be interested in that can go through the national guidelines in the treatment of these and I'm providing the link in the description below. So these are a few points about the clinical symptoms, complications, diagnosis and treatment of malaria. I hope you found this video informative. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family and for more such informative videos, subscribe to this channel. Thank you.